introduction. Okay. So uh, I will not introduce myself much, but uh, however, I'll gonna introduce my company that I work for. Okay. So give me just a sec. Yep. So I work for a company called IEEE. I don't know how many of uh, you people have heard about IEEE. So I work as a marketing head for India. And uh, those who doesn't know IEEE or know less about IEEE. So I will also open a floor also since I, I was requesting Saif Bhai for, uh, for this session. So uh, I've taken a couple of sessions on digital marketing before as well on the forum of MFI ID. I'm very thankful to Saif Bhai. But this time I wanted a bit of a difference uh, where I, I get more chance to interact with people, not just it should be a one way interact in the sense uh, from the beginning not at just the end so uh, this is going to be a very interactive one i want everybody to speak out to me and uh, uh, I'll, I'll be asking a lot of things so uh, please people can uh, i see 24 people so there are not hundreds of people who can uh, like who will speak at a time and then there will be nobody who will be understanding okay. anything. so can people speak about like uh, do you know i triple yes well pura tumara but only people who doesn't have background noises. I don't know. People are not responding. Yes, we know. Yeah. I see a couple of brothers. Only one answer I got. Shribai, the chat box also you have got uh, many. Yeah, you can put up in chat box as well if you don't want to answer. Okay. Yeah, so, there are already many. So, yes, 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 yes. I see a no as well. Okay. So, okay. Let's great. Yes, yes. Uh, it plays very famous. Okay, awesome. Okay. Okay. Okay, so yes, I play is one of the famous, I would say not very famous. People are making it famous. Just go back. So, uh, I believe is yes a famous organization, but I would say rather than famous, it's a it's a very old organization. Now we were just celebrating 140 years of I Triple So I Triple has been in existence from 140 140 years incorporated in New Jersey. So what we do is uh, we, we work on a spectrum of uh, activities that we have developing standards. Uh, technical writers, technical publishing. Uh, we have societies, as you see on my screen, right? We have 1200 more than standards. When I say standards, what does that mean is, it's just a, it's a baseline of a technology where uh, it gives flexibility and interoperability for everyone to uh, join in, okay? And to start using it at a layman layer, okay? So for best example of standard, I would give just a Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi is a uh, standard of IEEE. We call it A2.11, and there's a lot of versions of it. People, it's easy to understand from a Wi-Fi perspective that this is one of the IEEE standards and how easy it is to use for everyone, plug in, play everywhere, right? So these kind of, there are more than 1200 standards that we have in, around the world in every technology, not just in telecommunication like Wi-Fi. We have Bluetooth, we are in... Uh, healthcare domain, we are in aerospace. So Chandrayaan 3 uh, recently took off, uh, had more than 70 standards in from IEEE. Okay. So that's how uh, our standard spectrum is. And we have plus six, uh, 6 million technical articles. So people who are from engineering background, they knew they had to publish when they were in college. Right. So it combines of a digital library, which is which holds uh, 6 million plus technical articles on our IEEE Explore. And we have 39 technical societies and eight councils. When I say technical society, that means each of the domain and technology we have split it into one technical society. Let's say aerospace is one technical society. Semiconductor space is a one uh, a technical society and so on and so forth, right? So if you look at our member base, that IEEE is a member-driven and a volunteer-driven company. It's a not-for-profit organization, so hence we uh, we have a lot of volunteers and members. So we have 4 million members, around 160 countries. We operate from eight offices in the world. 
and uh, we also have plus 340 local sections that means let's say we i'm sitting in bangalore right so definitely there is a bangalore section where i can get connected to myself to i okay and then oh we do a lot of conferences yes i is as uh fahim bhai said right it's very famous because of our conferences that we do okay so we hold kind of 2000 plus conferences uh, around the world on the cutting edge technical content, technology, uh, innovators, everything included. So in India, I probably I think we hold out of 2000 something 150 to 200 we do in India yearly, rest around the world. So uh, uh, so this is about my company. Uh, I took a bit to explain that because it's very important because everybody I, at the end, what I really want is to people hopping in to IEEE and seeing what they can, how they can get benefit from IEEE. So IEEE is a place where uh, everybody has something. Okay, not especially in G, yeah. not especially in GMA, but for uh, it has a, things for everybody everybody who is working with technology and hope uh, i know most everybody is working with technology so when technology hits in i is there so somebody saying i'm not able to hear uh, is it my voice audible okay i think cyber is okay. it's coming good yeah okay so yes, uh, so thanks for all your responses here. Okay, and if you have questions on IEEE, please connect to me. I can help you. I can connect you with uh, maybe I'm not the right person for everything, right? Of course, you can't be. So I can uh, connect you with people and uh, departments who respective of your work. Okay, so please connect later after this on IEEE. So uh, after this, I'm going to hop into our uh, session agenda, which is uh, digital marketing and digital marketing, leveraging digital, uh, be your business from digital marketing, or you can call it scaling. It all means the same. So how you can scale your business with digital marketing. So before, before that, right, I just wanted to have this. Uh, yeah. So let's meet and greet. Okay, we always say this. Okay, even we have started following this in IEEE conferences as well. So let's, before talking, right, before talking, uh, we should have a understanding of whom I'm talking to, right? So I see a lot of brothers here. I know a couple of them, but I don't know everybody. Okay, so I look, I have, I have very less time since I started late and I have 20 to 30 slides on digital marketing, which is my regular slides. But of course, I'm not going to use every slide. So I have to cut it short and cut it to the point where you understand what you want. Okay, so I just want to uh, listen from people who have joined in. Okay, and I think I have... Uh, a couple of 30, 40 people here. So can you just put in the chat what you are uh, exactly looking? Are you already in digital marketing? Are you a business owner? Or you are a digital marketing professional? Or you are a manager of the marketing at your company? Or you are a business owner? You are an entrepreneur? Or you are a student who is looking to, to uh, make some fortune in digital marketing? So I just want to know that cluster of people that I have. So if everybody can type in, that will be great. Okay, how do I choose a digital marketing agency? Okay, super business owner. Okay, software tester. Okay. No, no, there's only three I got. That also defines like how many people are listening, though people have joined. I work for a company IDP. We assist students with admission process to pursue their education abroad. Okay, so it's a consultancy. Okay, I've done content writing course, uh, which includes digital marketing, but I'm not able to start my digital marketing. Okay, project management. I'm in SAP. Okay, web and graphic designer. Some network. Um, can we start career in digital marketing? Okay. Okay. I'm a project manager, digital transformation, leading the PMO team. Okay, awesome. So I think I have a, I can cluster you and I can kind of 
bucket you in different. Uh, so there are a couple of people who are looking to start digital marketing. They know uh, a bit, okay, and uh, they want to kick off with start, uh, digital marketing. They have done something in digital marketing like content writing or the graphic designing, but they want to uh, start with. A couple of people are there who yeah. who want to choose a perfect agency to work with. Okay, as a digital marketing, how to choose a good digital marketing agency. And there are a lot of professional brothers who are into tech, like tester, .NET developer, SAP, a blood planning to start a, a startup or a digital marketing uh, career. So I think these are the three kind of buckets. Okay, so that makes uh, easy for me to pick and choose what. So <clears throat> I can show you something. Okay, so I won't show this. I don't know, somebody's trying to talk. Okay, so uh, if you see my slide on the first, like there is no denial on the marketing piece, right? Marketing, we know marketing, there's no survival of any business or, or any kind of program that you run, right? So everything needs to be marketed, right? Okay, I will go to my next slide. So yes, I have this, one sec. So there are a couple of agendas that we have. Uh, I wanted to some have some icebreakers as well. So there's a lot of confusion with digital marketing as well since people have been, uh, okay, somebody wants to get lead uh, from digital marketing, super. Okay, so there are, I have some uh, ice breaking ones. Okay, there are a lot of uh, information on digital marketing on the market. But yes, there's uh, YouTube, there's Google, there's Instagram, there's a lot of things where a lot of content has been consumed on digital marketing, but it also creates a lot of myths and biasness and things like that in the market, right? So I just want to clear up some of the things so that people would find it very easy to start with, okay? And I have, uh, I'll be talking about the marketing concept a bit so that people realize that digital marketing is not a rocket science that I will cover in our ice breaking. Then before you start marketing, I want to tell you something that everybody is now hoping to start a market. Right? So <clears throat> I want to tell you something which you need to do before you start marketing. I won't cover, I think, targeting the right audience and all, uh, selecting right channel and all, uh, but I would, uh, yeah, so I want to cover a couple of things from six and seven. Okay, so let's dive in. So a uh, couple of things which I want to tell you as what digital marketing is not. Okay, so people tell you what is digital marketing, but I will tell you what digital marketing is not. Okay, it's not a rocket science. Okay. A lot of business owners, a lot of uh, even companies. Even uh, I'll give you, a, I'll not talk about your company, but I'll give you a classic example of my company. Okay, I've been working in IEEE since five years now. So a lot of companies, a lot of uh, agencies, a lot of organization, uh, when they don't think uh, what digital marketing is. They don't know, right? So they think it's a rocket science. So, so when I joined IEEE, right, I was the first person hired in India uh, for a dedicated uh, as a marketing professional i really do not i really is i don't know whether you know or not i really is a very marketing shy company so just because if uh, it's an altruistic company it's a not for profit organization doesn't want to get into conflicts doesn't want to get into rumors doesn't want to get into uh, a situation where they are considered as non neutral body or a biased body right so we just keep it out of every conflict that is in the market right so hence we don't market much it's all the work that is happening uh, that makes the sound right that's how you are hearing it about IEEE so but I was the first marketing professional dedicated professional who was uh, hired by IEEE India uh, back in five years back okay so I had a very tough time dealing with IEEE, making it, uh, making the company and the organization and my leadership understand what is digital marketing. Okay, so somebody had a thought like, okay, it's a rocket science, right? You do SEO, you do, uh, you run ads on Facebook or social media or Instagram, and your business booms, right? It's not that case. Okay, so it's not a rocket science. There's a lot of effort that you do. Like when you develop an app, right? Most of them are developers, right? Or program creators and such. So when you create programs and when you do development testing and all, right? How much work it takes? 
how much effort that goes in. We calculate it in, uh, so usually software developers, they know, right? We calculate it on man hours, right? How many hours I've put in that, right? So how many man hours are required for that this project or this app to be built, right? So exactly we follow the same project, uh, same formula in digital marketing as well as a project manager, okay? That how many hours of effort goes into digital marketing? How many hours of effort we need in um, getting this result? Okay, so it's the same way that we calculate in development as well as a project management, right? So the same way we do it in digital marketing as well. So uh, I'm telling you this so that you can relate how uh, it's not a rocket science, right? And it's not only for e-commerce online businesses, but also for brick and mortar businesses as well. Okay, so mostly people relate it with e-commerce. If I have an e-commerce store, I can do this. A digital marketing is fit for me. If I sell online, I can do this. A digital marketing is fit for me, but that's not true. Okay, it can it can make any business. It can be implemented to any business. A brick and mortar business, a lassie shop, which is out you see on the main road, right? A, a, a multinational company or anything, anything, any business. So, uh, Abid, I have a question. Yeah, I can take questions in between, not a problem. Because I want to be re relevant with you. I don't want to just give you some talk and just go away, right? Okay. Uh, everyone. So just wanted to know if you have uh, done digital marketing for any websites or any business. Uh, we, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Me as a person, right? Yeah. Before joining uh, IEEE, I, uh, I had my agency. Okay. I still my, run my agency, but of course it's not on my name, but I'm just the uh, still i have a team which take cares of it so gross sauce is one of our marketing agency before that i've, be, I've been working for flipkart uh, before i took me as a digital marketer okay so i have a whole profile of 12 years in digital marketing so can you please uh, show some examples like you have uh, uh, you know you were successful to gain a lot of uh, followers or um, Customers for so and so business, like wherever they are. Do you want to take the questions now? Later, we can take later also. I can take a couple of questions if uh, the people uh, people are just want to understand that concept which I'm trying to. No, no because I, I'm asking. I, I'm asking this because uh, just now uh, I have attended some few digital marketing courses, but uh, uh, the first uh, I'm hearing like it is not a rocket science. So just wanted to know if it is uh, real. I want to see some uh, observations from your end as well. Sure, Abhi. Uh, okay, uh, it's okay. I can wait till then. Yeah. So th I can categorize this kind That's of all. thing. Okay, so you want to see something? I'll definitely, I'm, I'll show you. That it will be good for uh, the whole audience as well. But this, I can take it uh, at the end. Okay, I'll definitely show you. Hello. Can, can we just go with the flow? And then maybe, you know, you could uh, take up those random questions because, you know, uh, it's, yeah, I mean, the continuity is getting cut. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Sure. So if you have any question uh, that you want to ask me at the end, which is not just related to the particular talking, topic, uh, talking on, uh, you can put it on a chat. I can take it at, at the end. And if you have any doubt which I'm, uh, on things which I'm explaining just now, then I can take it now. Okay. Yeah, so um, I was saying, right, yeah. I was saying, right, uh, so it's not just for e-commerce and those kind of businesses, right? And yeah. Yep. Uh, Shariba, you better continue. We will okay. not be disturbing between. Okay. So it's about one channel, SEO, social media, or email marketing, or ads, but it's overall strategy build around these channels. Okay, so yes, there's a lot of talk when a uh, lot of people, they they come to us in our agency as well, right? They, they only want to do this particular thing. Uh, they only want to leverage SEO. They only want to leverage with ads or email marketing, okay? But it's not about just one channel, right? It makes an uh, impact, right? So uh, uh, it makes an impact. Impact. So when uh, how it makes an impact as an overall strategy? Because uh, let's say uh, 
uh, I give a, this example uh, often of Amazon. Okay, whenever you have a great big billion day from Flipkart or a great in Amazon festival, right? Great Indian festival from Amazon. What do you see? You see a lot of ads, a lot of ads here and there. If you go to your app, there is app notification that is getting pushed in. Okay, you see there. You When you go to your Amazon website or your app, you see a big banner there, right? When you uh, open your YouTube, you see it there. When you Instagram, you see it there, right? Apart from this, what you also see when you drive to your office, maybe I don't know how people uh, these days, how many people are driving to office. But when you drive to office, right, you see that uh, Great Indian Festival coming up on the hoardings as well, right? So it's not about just one channel. These everything, everywhere you hop in, spot on, right? You see uh, a brand, a, a message, a marketing happening, right? So it creates an overall impact in your mind. It's not about, uh, about just one channel to be used, right? So yes, uh, uh, digital marketing is not about one channel to be utilized as, okay? And the next point is it's 99% marketing concept. It's not, it's just 1% executing through the digital channels, right? Executing through digital channels means like, okay, running a Facebook ad, uh, doing a social media marketing, running an email campaign. That is the execution from digital channel. It's a digital channel, right? But all the planning and the concept goes within before coming uh, out with that post, coming out with that uh, idea, coming out with that kind of email, right? It's all the 99% marketing concepts. Okay, it's all what you have experienced, what you have learned, what you know as a marketer, right? That's what it works there. It's not the channel which works for you, okay? So these are a couple of things which digital marketing is not, yes. So uh, I want to make this point very clear in everybody's mind, okay, about digital marketing and for any kind of marketing or company or a product who's trying to give service or uh, or service or a, um, delivering a product, okay? So usually we have this fundamental, what is a concept issue, okay? So we always say in our corporate world, try standing out among the competitors. Okay, everybody have heard this, right? We have to stand out from our competitor. Every day you talk in office, right? Every day you say this in your with your colleagues, with your team, with everybody. You know, we know, you know what we need to do? This is not working. This we need to stand out somehow from our competitors. We have 10 competitors, their products are this, they're selling out, they're doing this, they're doing this. Uh, you know what we need to do? We need to stand out from our competitors, right? That's what we say every day. Right. But what I say is try standing out among the contributors by adding more value. They are not your competitors. So we say it's a competitor, but actually they are not your competitors. Look, the idea is you're trying to solve a problem, right? If I'm I'm getting a, bringing a delivery app, right? I'm creating a delivery app. Then what you're trying to solve is you're trying to solve a problem where people get groceries, people get things uh, in a quick way. Not wasting time going to the market, uh, going in the hot sun or going in the traffic and getting fetching things for them, right? But what these apps are trying to do, they're trying to solve a problem of having a minimalistic, spending minimalistic time. Okay, get better services, get professional services, get uh, get things on your doorstep, right? This is the problem that they are trying to solve, right? If I have a delivery app and there is a XYZ, ABCD, there are a lot of delivery apps in the market. What I think is usually it, there are my competitors. They're going to penetrate market. They're going to take my percentage of the penetration in the market, right? So let's say I have a hundred percent of penetration in the market and there are 10 delivery apps, right? So everybody has a 10% of penetration in the market, right? As a, as a base level, right? And whom but does more effort, they succeed in getting more penetration in the market, right? So that's how I see the whole picture, that my penetration rate would be this much. This is the only audience I can penetrate because there are 10 competitors. The moment you say competitors, right, I'll tell you what happens. The moment you tell your competitors, the mindset goes like this. So if you can read out uh, one, two, three, four points, it will make some sense. I would try to make some sense out of this, okay? 
So when you think as a competitor, they are my competitors, what happens? Organizations in the same domain or space are not competitors, but contributors because all are trying to solve the same problem. Okay. So it's one problem and many organizations or individuals trying to solve them. So hence, they cannot be called as competitors. They have to be called as contributors. Okay. Second point, competitors make strategies which are negative in nature, which eventually hurt users. Okay. So the moment you put yourself in a contributor, uh, sorry, a competitor shoes, right? What's going to happen? Uh, as a human, you will start uh, developing strategies which will be in nature negative. Okay. And you eventually it hurts the users. Okay. I'll give you a classic example of this. Let's say there is a price penetration in the market. Okay. So one of the one of the one of the my competitor which i think is a competitor right have hiked the prices and i'm still selling at low prices okay selling at low prices okay so what if we are competitors what i'm gonna think is okay my profits are thin his profit is thick why i'm running my business on a thin profit where people can pay more definitely right why people have a buying buying capacity of at this price, I'm still offering them a lower price and I'm making a thin profit on it. After selling so many quantities, uh, this many orders, I still have low profits. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll raise my prices, I'll hike my prices. Eventually, it creates more competition and the and the end. And uh, party who is getting hurt out of this is the users. You get my point? So competitors always make a strategy which are negative in nature. And contributors make a strategy which are positive in nature, which eventually benefit users, which is, which is the ultimate goal of your business, to benefit the users. So when we are in the pursuit of becoming a competitor, we, uh, we, we lose this target. Yes, of course, we say every day in our business, we want to help people. We want to uh, get people into uh, some good services, right? They should get this, get this, right? But uh, while on the pursuit of being becoming a competitor and making competitive strategies, you lose that goal, right? So the fourth point says exactly, in the pursuit to stand out among the competitors, one will try to add more value to the end users, right? So if you think I'm a contributor, right? What you're gonna do is now, how I'm gonna stand out from my competitor, contributor, then adding more values. Then I'll focus on creating more values around my products and services. How can, okay, uh, the other company gives five with this service, okay. I have to give them 10. You'll focus on value addition. You'll focus on your services, on your product, the benefits of the products. Not the, people usually what they do is, they focus on marketing, but there is a huge gap and there is a huge issue with the product or service. They don't focus there. And I know uh, the you know, I know the situations in our uh, corporate world, right? Uh, in our uh, era, right? There is a big uh, detachment or disconnection between our product teams and marketing team as well. They don't understand their language. They don't understand their language. Okay, so but the companies who have a tight collaboration within their product team and uh, their uh, what do you say, uh, marketing team, right? They keep exchanging uh, databases and uh, feedbacks and information with them. What they do is they fix the product. The marketing team makes sure that our product or service have enough enough value, enough value that it's self sellable. Self sellable. Okay. So that's that's the exchange process that happens between the two teams, but uh, there's a huge disconnect. So yes, we should look into that aspect. Yes. And we should think start thinking about we are contributors, not uh what do you say, a competitor. Okay. So I was saying this, right? 90%, 99% of marketing and 1% of digital channels, right? <clears throat> so hence, this should not be followed. Okay, hence, you just shouldn't be hopping to any channel or picking up any channel, okay, which uh, 
uh, uh, which gonna uh, just make you think that okay, using this channel, I can bring in my business more. Then it's a then it's a really a mess. You have to apply marketing concept to it. Okay, I'll not go dive and deep in these things. Okay, let me just. Give me a moment. Just want to hop into slides. Give me a moment. So yes, I wanted to talk about <clears throat> these things. Yeah, so I was talking before you start marketing. So I've got responses where people want to start marketing, right? And uh, I, I I would say there are a couple of things you need to do before starting marketing, okay? So how many people you uh, know Ikea right now? I, I think everybody knows that uh, Ikea has a India, India stores as well, Hyderabad and Bangalore, right? And uh, soon there will be a lot of places where Ikea will be <laughs> more pre predominant in India. Okay. So why I'm saying this is as a use case is uh, there is there's a lot of effort which goes before starting the market. Okay, so what is required before you start marketing to set you up with the correct marketing strategy is a thorough research on demand of the product. Okay, demand of the product. So there are a lot of uh, what I would suggest is there are a lot of bullet proofing your business available on the worldwide. Okay, if you search. On Google, how to uh, find demand for your product? Okay, there are a lot of ways. There's 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 one strategy called bulletproofing your business. It's from London Reedy. Uh, there's a accelerator company in uh, UK which has created this concept of bulletproofing your business. So they have created a approach where you can just uh, do that practice and see if your product has a demand or not. Okay, so there are a lot of formats given. You can Google it. Okay, so, but what I mean to say, a thorough research on the demand of the product is very much required. Okay, so that's usually, look, what idea you're getting with your business and what idea you, let's say, if you have an existing business as well and you are starting with a new program or new set of services or product, right? Then also you need to think what is the demand of the product. Okay, it's my idea. It's it's coming from my brain, right? May not, it should uh, it be fit for everybody may not everybody can see the same value what I see in it. Possibly not that everybody have the same acceptance of the product and services that the way I have for my product and services. Right? It's true enough. It's it's just like your clothes. Right? I like my clothes very much. Each of my clothes. Nobody will say I don't like these clothes. Right? But every time it's not the true, It's it's not universally truth with everybody, right? They may like it, they may not like it. So a thorough research on demand of the product is very important. So recently I was talking to a company in Silicon Valley and they were saying they created a delivery app, okay. And they they have a 10 million of uh, funding as a A-series funding, okay, in Silicon Valley, okay. So uh, I I was asking them how they started with this app. They built a, how many hours of development was went into building this whole process of app delivery system. There, you know, right? It, it's a four screen app, right? When it comes to a delivery system, it's a four screen app. There is a, a screen for user, user screen for the delivery system, screen for a lot of things, right? It's a big end to end huge thing right so what they did is they they said before we invested in that making that app and getting the whole team sitting it making it and getting all the uh, vendors the uh, vendors for it getting all the marketing delivery partners for it right micro delivery partners for it what we did we uh, we created that we did not create that product we went with some essentials door to door Okay, we went with some essentials door to door in Silicon Valley and their targeted area. 
they they started delivering not delivering it but going to home and home and asking about it do you want this particular thing to be delivered every day to your home somebody said yes somebody said no somebody took it somebody took the subscription it was happening all manually all manual they were they were giving memos the memos paper <laughs> writing uh, okay this person uh, took this uh, and uh, he he or she needs this service by this this product in month so everybody was written down they were giving memos out okay so they carried out this activity for a while okay and wh what they found was yes there are a couple of interested people in the market okay not just couple there is a good bunch there's a good interest in the market in silicon valley and people want to have these products there was denial for a couple of products. There, there was acceptance for these kind of products. Hence, after all this effort and research, now they created the app which holds all this for that. So you see, my idea is to, uh, about uh, telling you this is we sometimes we need to carry out activities which can prove that my product or uh, my services has a demand before going into the tech. Usually people develop a lot of things a portal or an app or and then they check the demand i think it's the wrong way of doing it we should do it before computer analysis as i said in that example right uh, i will refer to one more uh, example of ikea so before uh, hyderabad uh, when it got before the hyderabad the ikea when it got launched right uh, i remember the person uh, the person from the marketing of ikea which is, I'm losing his name. So he was deputed three years back in Hyderabad when IKEA was nowhere heard in India. He was living in Hyderabad for the past three years before the launch of the IKEA, just to understand the market. So he spent time in India, understood the culture, understood the Hyderabad culture uh, in specific, understood the people, understood the brands around it, Okay, what maybe their their competitors or somebody, and then they developed and came with a whole marketing strategy. It was it was three years before, when they put this research into place in Hyderabad. Okay, so it's very important for everybody to have a competitor analysis, and building buyer's persona as well. Right, what kind of audience you think is fit to buy my product? This is very important. Usually, we, we are not able to get to a visualization of where I can, uh, today, I don't know how many people can visualize their own uh, customer. My customer should be the, let's have a, have a Rolex watch kind of product, right? I can imagine my customer, okay, this customer will walk into my store, okay, in a, a what do you say, in a may, maybe an expensive car in a BMW, he'll be wearing a Armani suit, okay, and he'll be, having all the expensive stuff i can visualize this customer buying my expensive watch so what's your ideal customer what do you think when you think of your customers we we usually don't do the this so building fire buyers persona is very important okay that i should have my visualization of my ideal customer in in a very clear way the more clear it is the more your marketing will make sense to them otherwise it won't say make sense to them then finding the right place of your audience. So once you have that audience, right, where uh, what kind of audience or my buyers gonna be, I need to find their location. Location in the sense, so since we are talking digital, so we want to find their location where they hang out online. Okay, where's the place? Is it is it Gen Z's? So Gen Z's, well, where, where they're gonna hang out? Instagram, Snapchat, right, TikTok. So that's my right place of my audience. Okay, my audience are professionals. My audience are like uh, mid-year. They are very professionals. Okay, so where I can find them? I can find them on LinkedIn, right? My my audience are bureaucrats or very uh, high uh, high profile people. They are fame. Uh, they have fame. They are famous. Mostly, I'll find them out in and more more active on Twitter, right? So finding the right place of our audience, it's very important, very, very important. 
maybe some of the time people a uh, lot of business they do mistake right uh, finding out the right place of their audience so they keep on hitting a place where they don't where they are not all right just because Google, uh, tiktok videos and tiktok uh, ads are flourishing that doesn't mean that if i run a tiktok ad then uh, i'll get sales i'll get leads because my audience aren't there right so it's very uh, it, it's very important to have that cognizance of that business okay and then selecting the appropriate channel rationally okay so rationally as i said finding the right place of your audience is the rational for selecting the uh, appropriate channel where i'm going to hunt or promote my business okay and at least you should make a short term strategy people usually fail to so there's a saying in english where a lot of people would have heard it right if you uh if you uh, if you plan to fail then you have uh, failed to if you fail for plan to plan right you will uh, you have planned to fail correct that's the correct way of saying is so when you don't plan for things right you don't make a strategy that means definitely you're going to crash okay so these are couple of things which we uh, have, i would suggest every marketer out there okay everybody who is running a business or a product and selling a product service should do this okay should do this before getting into any marketing activity okay okay so i will i will jump to couple of things okay i will skip lot of slides here and i will jump to something which is called scaling of your business okay i know lot of people will be interested in this and i will just go to one sec sorry i have to skip a lot of slides because i don't know look it's it's a very short webinar so i cannot cover everything in this and digital marketing it's a very what do you say lengthy topic there's a lot of nitty gritty to it one sec Okay, so yes, so you have a business, you have a product and service, and you want to scale your business from like let's say one thousand dollar a month or ten thousand rupees per month to well, let's say one lakh rupees or ten lakh rupees per per month. Okay, you want to scale it. That's what the scaling means. Okay, so yes, what through digital marketing, one thing uh, we all need to understand. Okay, digital marketing is all about internet, right? Uh, it's internet is the base thing which is required uh, in any marketing to call it as a digital marketing. If there is no internet connectivity, then you you don't call it a digital marketing. Okay. If there is an internet con connectivity, call it as a digital marketing. That's how I uh, differentiate. Okay, so one thing we need to understand from uh, if you want to scale your business, okay, so you have to be an authority in your space. That is exactly the term which I use, which all the search engine uses, all the giants uses. Okay, you have to be an authority in your space. Let's say I'm into digital marketing or anything right anything for that matter right i should be google or any social media or any anybody who is looking at you should look at you from the authority perspective okay let's say when we talk about statistics right and we come across across gartner we say it's authoritative statista we say it's authoritative right they have authority in presenting statistics to the world right so these are the when when it, uh, when you say service or product right things pops in your mind right the brand they pop in your mind what is that that's the authority that they have built that's the authority that they have built on over the internet okay so when you talk uh, media right forbes comes into mind medium comes into mind when you talk about when you talk about tech media right tech crunch crunch base these all comes into your mind right what they have done is why it coming to your mind because they have built authority in, on over the internet right so building authority should be your your end goal okay that i have to build authority around my business then my business my product or service should be recognized as authority in my space right if i am if i am this if people want this then this is the authority to go to okay so that is something which you need to build around your business and how to build that authority is 
is to build more content around your product and service. So the more content you have, so look, uh, we are talking about digital marketing, right? We are talking about search engine, social media, and everything, all this sort, right? So what they see is what they what they get from you is a content. This platform, what you get from you is content. What uh, search engines get from you is a lot of blog pieces, articles, your web pages, right? These all things. They are these are the content that goes in to search engine, right? And the social media, what they, they, they see your posts, reels, these are the content what they get from you, right? So the more content you have and more qualitative content you have around all these channels, right? Uh, then what you're gonna, you, you will slowly build an authority. It's not gonna happen in day one, day two, day three or day 10, or I would say in days, uh, in six months as well, it's gonna take time. But slowly you will build that authority. Right? Slowly you will. But what you need to push in is uh, building more content on it. Okay. So usually I'll tell you a very fact. I don't know uh, how people are going to digest this and how people, if people are di digesting or if not. Uh, I'm not sure, but I'll tell you this. What we do, uh, do when we want to build authority for a new business or a new, uh, a new product or service, right? we what there's something called what we do is front loading content okay so let's say i've started a business okay front loading of business and telling front loading of content okay so what we essentially do is let's say let's say i've started a new business new website or a new product right first six months what i'm going to target as i don't want to look into sales I don't want to look into getting leads for it. Yeah, that is another department I would say that would do into, but this should be a dedicated to build authority, right? This sh there should be somebody who's doing it to build the authority over the time, right? So this is called front loading of content and what we focus on first six months. I want to create best content on every bits and pieces and everything around my product and services, every topic that people can can talk about, right? About that product or services, everything covered, right? First six months, I want to create content. I'll, I'm gonna front load this to search engines, to social media. Okay, six months, that's my focus. Truly, my true focus is up uh, like front loading the content. I will not, Think about anything else because I won't, without content, nobody gonna engage. If you have a, let's say if you run a website also, which is just eight pages website, okay, have a about page, okay, a couple of about page and couple of uh, like one, uh, 10 services page, then there's a contact page. You don't have enough to engage. Why should people come on your, they, uh, on your site? They don't have, what they're gonna see contact page or so what are the services that you offer? That's not enough. Okay, one once I'll hop in, I'll I'll discover and explore all your services. Right, there are ten services that you do, ten products that you offer. I got to know about it. What is the next time? What is the next opportunity for me to hop in your site, to come to your site? There's no opportunity left. I've explored everything at once. Right, today I made a move on your website and I explored everything. There's not not much enough content on your site to re-engage every time right so it's very important so that's what we and every i think every business should follow this uh, creating more content and if possible please dedicate people dedicate time to build content around your business okay so i'll show you an example of something okay so let's say how to create content around your business i'll give you a, it's already uh, I hope people don't mind taking me more 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes because we started late. Or if you want to cut it short, I'll I'll cut it short and uh, another five minutes I can wrap it up. Oh, please uh, carry on. It's interesting. Okay. So I'll, I'll share you an example of Let's say I talk about HubSpot. So everybody knows HubSpot, right? HubSpot, how they have, uh, 
they are software, CRM, digital marketing, a lot of things, HubSpot, right? And usually since I'm giving a HubSpot example, because uh, I want you to know HubSpot as well as a marketer. So they have softwares. They, so they create softwares, marketing hub, sales hub, service hub, CMS, operational, commerce, commerce hub, right? They talk about AI, HubSpot, app marketing, right? It's a basic class CRM where you can do multiple things, right? So in order to build authority on the web, what they have done is they have they have uh, they have flooded the internet with their content at a large okay they have flooded the content over the internet with their content at a large scale okay so if you go to their resource section right if i want to just see blogs okay so i'll show you how they work these things work One second. So, hmm. so if you look uh, product and services, I just told you, right, they, they are marketing uh, folks. They provide marketing CRMs and software uh, we can, where you can use as a project management software for marketing or email, email marketing or learn about digital marketing, a lot of things, right? So they cover each and every topic which is around this, their business, okay. And they have created a kind of book or a kind of TOC if you look at the resource. They talk about academy, they talk about templates, they talk about ebooks, they talk about all the marketing tools, they talk about all the kits, they talk about podcast. Okay, first million, there are a lot of programs of podcasts they're running. They talk about videos, uh, Another form of content, uh, hustle, marketing with HubSpot, HubSpot, marketing against the grain. A lot of things on a video content. On the newsletter side, they have a the hustle kind of things. If you look at their blogs, right, they have categorized everything. Okay. Uh, categorized everything. They have covered marketing, sales, website, services, hustle, next in AI. So you, you, you see, and they... Ex uh, you see this explore all the topics on the right instagram marketing customer retention email marketing seo sales prospecting everything so they have developed content on each of the keyword or the word which is relevant to their business okay they have not left anything and they, they still they're developing it right every day right so this what it helps you in is uh, creating the authority over the web that okay, HubSpot is a place where people, uh, when you say marketing, then uh, or marketing CRM or marketing templates, Hubs HubSpot is the best. That's how it's get treated, right? Because a lot of content has gone into the internet, okay, and now internet has recognized HubSpot as an authority in this space. So that's what exactly my point is. Okay, I want you to make your business, your product and services, okay, full-blown authoritative on the website. It's not, it's not gonna, I'm sorry. It's it's gonna take time, but the, the day you start, you start, right? If you don't start, then don't think of your uh, business going into that level, okay? You cannot build authority. So if you start, then you'll be able to build your authority. And I'm saying it's it should be a part of your everyday's job. It should be part of your everyday's job. It's just not uh, everyday uh, I'm thinking about how to get more sales, more leads, more traffic. No, I need to think about this as well because in the long run, this is what gonna help you, okay? So to build all these things, right? To build more content on uh, uh, what do you say? The front load internet with your content is very important to do that, right? There's a... There's a framework called job to be done, JTBD. Okay, I know a lot of program managers, project managers, they 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 follow this uh, JTBD, right, framework. It's it's all about like, uh, it's all about thinking in a way uh, that, and thinking in a way from the buyer's perspective, from your customer's perspective, what they want to achieve with your product and services. Okay, what they want to achieve with your product, using your product and service, what I want to achieve. Okay, that's what job to be done framework is. 
So a lot of I I I saw that there are a lot of people from the development end, okay, SAP engineer and all, right? So when you create an app or you create a system or you create a program, right? You have certain goals, right? What people can achieve through this. What people can achieve through this, right? That's that's the, the job to be done framework, okay? And you have to think in your perspective, your business perspective that uh, how I'm going to implement job to be done framework in my business, okay? So I'll show you this as an example of job to be done, okay? So there's a situation there's a motivation and there's a desired outcome we need to fit our product in this okay so what is the situation where people gonna use that pro your product or your service what is that situation that makes them think that i need to uh, use certain service or certain product what is that situation you need to think about that okay and i want to motivation right what i'm gonna do with that service or product Okay, in that situation. So that what I can achieve, the desired outcome. So that what I can achieve, right? So these are the three, uh, what do you say, uh, the baseline of uh, job to be done, right? There's a situation, there's a motivation and the desired outcome that people want to achieve. If my product is not following this methodology, right, then it's very hard to get your audience. It's very hard to uh, understand them. It's hard to market them. It's hard to create content to build that authority. It's very hard. Everything becomes very hard, right? So I'll give you an example to explain this. Okay, so here it is in terms of digital marketing. Okay, so when I'm in a situation, okay, I want to do this. Okay, let's say, uh, people were running some, I, I saw people, somebody runs a consultancy who gives a, a opportunity for uh, uh, students to go abroad and study, right? So let, let me put it this way. Okay. So when I want, I'm in a situation when I want to do my MBA in UK. Okay. This is a situation for me. When I want to do MBA in UK. Okay. I want to find a consultancy, okay, who who helps me out with all the procedure and all the information related to it. Hence, I search on Google and find a promising solution. So I can, and the desired outcome is, so I can do MBA in UK. I hope you follow this. Okay, I'll repeat this once again. So the situation for my business is when, uh, when I'm when I want to do MBA in UK or London, let's say when I want to do a, um, MBA in UK, I want to look for an agency or a consultancy who helps me with the procedure and all the related information. Okay, that's my motivation. That's what I want to do. Okay, hence I search on Google to find a promising solution. Okay, so I can do my MBA in. UK. So that's the desired outcome that I want to do. So this is the whole job to be done framework using Google. So use it for digital marketing. Okay. So I, I, now I have to align my business and services with this that uh, the, that's uh, with this so that I can get uh, I can get to a place where people really want to use my business or services so that they can have their desired outcomes. Okay, so I think uh, I will not be able to do justice with job to be done in this uh, very short period. Okay, so please look into this. If you want more explanation, more help, you can reach out to me as well on the internet. There are loads of information videos on YouTube where you can go look for job to be done, understand it, uh, understand how to implement this in your business. Use it, use it, please. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry. So this is how job to be done framework works. Okay. And you need to implement this on your business and uh, just, okay. So I'll go to the same slide now to wrap it up. Okay. So to scale your business, we have covered, you need to have build authority. You need to have more front load, more content to the internet. You need to follow job to be done framework. The moment you uh, 
find job to be done implemented in your business right you will what you will find is uh, start you will start with some seed keywords okay seed keywords are the keywords that uh, the way i said right uh, i want to do mba in mba in uk right so i'm doing mba in uk is the keyword that you got for your business right i want to look for a consultancy who provides information and the process okay so con consultancy admission consultancy is another keyword that you got it's a seed keyword okay it's very important seed keyword then so that i can do mba in uk doing mba in uk is another seed keyword that was the outcome keyword right so these this is how you get the major uh, the major I, I would say the main keywords around your business around you this is the main keywords around your business now what you do is you take synonyms of it right there are a lot of the lot of tools that you can use like people would have i don't know whether you know there are a couple of tools called samrush hrefs where you where you can find uh what do you say uh, keywords for your business so put this seed keywords on them and then see what more keywords it gives you out as a result okay it will give you lakhs of keywords then based on those keywords you can bring all the content into picture into play right though okay these are the all relevant keywords with my business how people are searching on google hence i have to build content on all these kind of keywords all these kind of keywords okay so you start with seed your seed keyword using job to done job to be done framework then you take more keywords and synonyms so using these kind of tools called hrefs or semrush okay uh, these kind of tools hubspot also has a, a keyword tool to research for a basic okay and then follow hub and spoke model so let's say i got 1 lakh keywords around my business and your uh, sharik is asking me to develop 1 lakh content pieces and 1 lakh content on all these keywords right it's uh, it's very it's a very big job so what we do is we follow hub and spoke model okay you can google it i will not be able to uh, explain hub and spoke model in just 2 minutes right but everybody has seen a cycle or a hub and spoke in a bicycle or a bike right so there's a hub and there's spokes to it right so you take everything all the keywords and cluster them okay to make them hub and spoke so let's say <coughs> mba in uk could be one hub and every information around it right how to get visa how to uh, apply for visa for uk mba what is the cost of mba what is the fees of mba in uk what are the best colleges in mba for mba in uk right best places in uk uh, maybe london linchester or whatever right to to go for mba right these all are spoked this all are spoke your hub is doing mba in uk so you can create a big book or a big pillar or a hub on mba in uk and then everything falls under spoke so there are a lot of tools as well automatic tools to do it it's a, one of the tool which i use is called insights uh, keywordinsights.io keywordinsights.io is a tool where <clears throat> if you uh, if you put all your keyword it will cluster it it uses ai technology to cluster and it can it can cluster and give you cluster and spoke model in a pivot table so you can it makes life very easy even semrush also have the feature so semrush has both the features researching on keywords as well and putting them into clusters and hub and spoke model on their platform itself at the same time so you can use these so that makes uh, your work easy so let's say you have one lakh keywords okay seed keywords which is around your uh, business okay and then you created you don't have to create content as uh, one lakh individually right what you can do let's say out of this one lakh you have created uh, 100 hubs okay 100 hubs and all your keyword all your topics rest of the topics falls under each of the hubs okay they are related to each of the hub so what i need to do is i'll create 100 comprehensive uh, content pieces 
hundred comprehensive content pieces which will cover all these uh, spokes and keywords. So that means for uh, for getting that attraction of hundred keywords, I want to I uh, have to only write hundred hubs, not one lakh, right? So it makes easy and it covers uh, all keywords of your business, right? So that is one of the model, but look, I'm, I'm really sorry, I will not be able to do justice here with all, all these models and techniques that is used, okay? So I'm just giving you a head start food for thought to start with looking on, but these are very important thing in digital marketing. I think this is the way to go with digital marketing, okay? And this is how it's happening currently and will continue to happen with digital marketing. Building authority, building content. Content is the main player element of digital marketing okay so apart from this i'll just uh i'll just go through one slide at last okay I'll give me just bear with me for five minutes more okay so i'll just go one slide to wrap this up so that uh, covering the tools that you gone uh that can help you with all this okay so here are a couple of tools that we have uh, tools for each topic that we have talked today in digital marketing. Okay, so uh, so there's a buyer's persona template tool with HubSpot to create a buyer's persona for your business for designing and things. Everybody knows Canva now. Okay, you can use Buffer. Buffer is a social media automation tool. Okay, so let's say I have one post which I have to post to LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Snapchat, a lot of places, right? And I can, I, I do it individually, right? Buffer is one stop solution for a platform where you can integ uh, integrate, not integrate, you can just sign up on, um, you can bring all your social media into one place at Buffer. And the moment you make a post on Buffer, it posts on every each platform. So you don't have to make four posts. You have to make just one post to post it on four platforms. Then you can use MailChimp. MailChimp is an email marketing tool which provides you with a lot of automations. Okay. So you can create a full-fledged buyer's journey from entering your website to a welcome message to a welcome email, then uh, everything, whole buyer's journey till the till the person gets converted. So MailChimp is one of the good tools that I use. Okay. It has a lot of kind of plans, flexible plans. Google Trend is one of the tools which I use to, uh, what you say, to capture trend trends to understand what is the trend going on so you can just pop in any keyword or any surveys or any 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 anything that you want or uh, to get insight and you, google trends will show you how that has been evolving since two years three years one years past six months it gives you good insights okay facebook audience insights yes so in your facebook there is something called facebook audience insight if you won't go to it, uh, you won't get it in the mobile version. If you go to your web version of Facebook, then you can find it on the Facebook audience insight on your Facebook ad platform. And it gives you a lot of insights about audience. So we have been talking about how to understand your audience, right? What they wear, what they do, what they eat, why, why they do what, what they do, right? So to understand that Facebook audience insight is a good tool to understand your audience. And finally, I'll end up with uh, a, a platform called Zapier. Okay, people also call it Zapier. Yes, I don't know what is the correct, but Zapier, yes. Zapier, I don't know people know about Zapier or not, but this is very interesting tool and you can automate almost everything what you want. Okay, with Zapier. So uh, let's say I want, uh, for, for example, for example, uh, let's say I want, uh, I want this process to be automated that every time, I create a video on on and upload a video. Okay, I have a video. I want to put it on YouTube, then post it on uh, social media. Okay, this is what I do every day, right? Or maybe part of my work or part of my business, right? I create a video. I upload that on YouTube. Then I post it on social media for to market it, right? So every day you do that. Okay, so Zapier helps you automating this process. So what I can define from on Zapier is, okay, Zapier, uh, whenever there is a new uh, video uploaded to Google Drive, okay, create a video on YouTube from my Google Drive. And after that, you post that on LinkedIn. 
So it can create that whole automation without any coding. You just have to integrate things. Sign up, integrate, it works. Okay. So check out for that Zapier tool. You can do whatever integrations you think of. Uh, you can think of. So it's life makes life very easy for a lot of marketers. Okay. So yes. So that was my last recommendation on the automation. I would like to uh, cut it here and uh, give the uh, opportunity to you to ask questions uh, and things like that. I'm really sorry it took a lot of time and most of the things were uh, half explained because of the interest of the time. So, but I'm just giving, as I'm saying, this webinar is just a food for thought for you to start with these kind of things. Okay. So, yes, I'll open the floor, Sahibai, for people to ask questions. To... Yeah, uh, Khair. very interesting, very useful session. And since uh, you have so much content to share, so much knowledge to share, inshallah, we, we should have uh, more such regular sessions that will be very helpful, inshallah. So, okay, uh, whomsoever have any questions, they can go ahead. And there are some questions uh, in, in the chat box also, you can pick from there also. Okay. Alaikum. Alaikum Shahzad, yeah, Shahzad here, Sharif Bhai. Uh, I am audible to you, right? Hello. Yes, yes, you are audible. Please okay, yeah. So my question is in this world of AI, wherein we have uh, AI taking many things. So how helpful is it, and where do you see? Uh, you know, we can take uh, businesses or digital marketing uh, with these tools or uh, with AI. Any any thoughts on that? So, Shahzad, by what I would say to this is, look, you are realizing it very late. Okay. It's, it's already, uh, I've been using AI in marketing since the past uh, six, seven years. Okay. So, it's already there has already come up uh, we have been using it has been matured okay and uh, usually people think of ai gonna take their jobs AI gonna take the marketing thing but it's not right as i as uh, one of the slide i spoke about it's 99 percent marketing and one percent of digital channels right so ai falls in that one percent so it's all the thought of marketing that you have in your mind execution strategies planning everything okay so yes, AI is very important to use. So all the tools which I told you, right, uh, you're seeing on my screen as well, right? Canva runs on AI, Buffer runs on AI, Mailchimp runs on AI, Google, everybody knows it's a, it's a super set of AI and ML, okay. Facebook audience inside runs on AI, Zapier is a, is a classic example of AI. So yes, everything is AI now. Okay. But you need to understand that, okay, there are a couple of uh, policies as well. I don't know whether you want to talk about policies as well or not, because a lot of companies are uh, have different policies and using AI tools. But what you need to understand, there are different kinds of AIs. Okay. There are generative AI, there's a responsive AI as well. Okay. Generative AI, one of the, uh, in putting layman terms, I will put it in a simple way that one of the AI where you have to feed data first to get an output, like chat GPT. Okay. So these are the kind of uh, platforms where p companies and people uh, sh uh, and should avoid putting in data. Okay. Or sensitive data, I would say companies data or something, because you have to feed data to it to get a result. Okay. But Canva has a different kind of, uh, it's a, it's a just a generative AI. You put an idea and it uh, creates a picture for you. Let's say I want uh, um, elephant sitting on moon. If I put this description, uh, elephant sitting on moon, Canva creates an image for it. So the data which I'm putting into this AI is not very confidential with my company. Okay, so hence usable should use. Okay, and there is one uh, type of AI which is called respons uh, responsible AI, where the AI doesn't take a decision. It ha it's it gives you analytics, and at the end, humans have the authority to uh, take a decision. So I think uh, we should understand the categorization of AI. There's a lot of work happening on AI ethics as well. 
people using AI. I think people, uh, I should not say people using AI, but everybody, look, we cannot escape from AI. Okay, that's one thing for sure. Kids, they are, they are already using AI on every game that they play, right? Everybody is using AI. So we should, le we should learn ethics of AI. So IEEE is, yes, we are doing, uh, there's a program called Certified AI Certified where we are focusing on the ethics side of the AI, AI ethics. It's a 20 minute module that we have created in AI. I think everybody should look for it. It's called IEEE Certified Ethics in AI. If you search it on Google, you will get it. It's a 20 minutes, so a very basic, uh, very intuitive module that we have created for learning. Okay. So everybody should understand AI. I think that's the thing. I, I hope you sorry, answered your question. Sorry to cut you off. Uh, just wanted to check. Can you please repeat the name of the course which you just mentioned? It's called IEEE Certified Awareness Module. Uh, IEEE. Is that what you mentioned in the beginning? Certified Awareness Module. Certified Awareness Module. Okay. I will yeah. check. Or you can just Google, uh, yes, you can, you can go, uh, Google IEEE AI Ethics. Sunday, you can put in the chat box also. Chat box? Yeah, definitely, I'll put it in. You can just type IEEE AI Ethics. So it will, it, it also has a page which gives you a lot of information on AI and there's a small modules that we have created for addressing the ethics. What is the ethics in AI? Look, it, it's true with every technology. People, they get hyped of technology, right? And nobody cares about the security and everything. I know Saab Bhai working on IoT and other stuff, right? Saab Bhai, you will, you will agree with this, right? When IoT came into picture, right? Everybody was uh, so much excited. Nobody was talking about security uh, aspect of AI, privacy of IoT, right? But the moment the world got hit with, uh, with the scams on IoT, millions of dollars washed away through IoT systems in casinos in a lot of where a lot of crimes happening using IoT devices right then people realize that the ethics of IoT the privacy of IoT the security aspect of IoT so that's how the human uh, thing right but uh, I think uh, we should all look at AI and the uh, ethics of using AI uh, I had one question Yes, you should buy, please. The digital marketing, uh, basically what companies I have seen, so they are uh, using the digital marketing services for, for the resource or cross of supermarkets and all that. How digital marketing can be enabled for the local grocery stores or someone having local business at a local locality? How can they push okay. forward themselves with the digital marketing or how can as a firm can be created on your local businesses how to uh, use digital marketing for local business right so yeah, right. yes so as i said right it's it, it's not only for the e-commerce business but it's for the local business as well okay couple of uh, strategies that we use when we promote or my agency promotes uh, small businesses or the local business okay so when you when it comes to there are both the ways there is uh, organic and paid as well okay so organic means paying no money so as uh, if you heard about i uh, sorry uh, seo search engine optimization right so there is a local search engine optimization as well okay there is a local search engine optimization that uh, that caters to the local audience of people i think you need to look into that Okay, I'll not be able to explain everything because I have to tell you more things about it, uh, rest of the things. So uh, look about on local SEO. There's something called local SEO. Definitely you can get benefit from it. The second best performing tool that I have seen is Google GMB, Google My Business. Okay, Google My Business is one of the best tool for local businesses. Okay, so if your business doesn't have a uh, location on Google, Please make it. There's a platform called Google My Business GMB. It's a it's a phone and a web app as well. Okay, use that. There's a lot of options there. Uh, GMB lets you create uh, uh, the the location for it. Add or add a lot of things. You can add information. You can add your services, your timings, everything. Okay, and uh, the best part is get more reviews on it. Okay, the more genuine reviews are there. Uh, so it's called, we call it as a local pack. Okay. GMB local pack. So if you see search anything, right, you will see a 
uh, first thing what you're going to see is ads on Google on the top. Then what you see is a map. Below that map, there are three, three, four, uh, what do you say, layers, kind of lines, right? Bucket that we call as, as the local pack. That is the local business uh, uh, display area of Google. Okay, so if you are able to make it there, then it's going to help business really you can and that app gives you a lot of things message people can message you people can call you people can ask for services uh, the lot of things you can do explore that gmb okay uh google my business and second thing i would say is uh, if you want to go with paid then i think uh, there is something uh, there there are ads which runs on google maps okay so when you open a google map you see all red locations right the location icon is on red okay so there's a different kind of location option uh with pin which is purple color which has a purple color so that's a ad on google uh, uh, google maps as well so you can run even if you have budget to spend i would prefer go spend some money on uh, google map ads okay so that anybody who's passing through or stays in your locality of your business right will uh, will will see that ad okay so that's one thing to have eyeballs so yes these three things will definitely help i hope uh, i have answered your question you uh hi shaj bhai assalam alaikum uh, adnan the side hello yes please Can you yes uh so i just have a question around uh, influencer marketing because i am like I have, I'm not into the performance marketing side. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been working in uh, from past two years in the influencer marketing space. Mm -hmm. uh, so where uh, we generally contact uh, some of the biggest influencers or celebrities to promote brands or any kind of service, right? So how do you think, but because of the recent, uh, like, so basically I was working for an agency and then um, I worked uh, for a few brands over there. But after that, I have been doing freelancing and other stuff. Uh, but I see a lot of influencers coming in today in the in the digital era, where uh, the uh, uh, let's say the ethics or uh, uh, relevance is not that great nowadays. So, where do you think the inf I mean, uh, as per your expertise and uh, I mean, you have been in the space for a very long time in the marketing. So. Uh, what, where do you think the influencer marketing space is going and uh, do you think it's still uh, relevant to use influencer marketing? Uh, how how good is it? Yes, actually influencer marketing is a, one of the strongest tool. Okay, if you want to promote your product services and all, right? So a lot of type of influencer marketing goes into like product reviews. Okay, so usually people do product reviews with uh, like unboxing, uh, all these kind yeah. of stuff goes with the influencer marketing so two things i would say about influencer one one is uh, uh the, you should look at how to choose a influencer marketer okay the influence that you are working with okay maybe a celebrity okay so usually we we used to follow a metric called engagement rate okay let's say the celebrity or the famous person on instagram or anywhere youtuber uh, would have a big subscriber or a follower base okay but uh, they will lack in uh, they will lack in the engagement rate okay and one concept is for sure in influencer marketing the more number of followers the person has it it will bring down the engagement rate as their followers increases their engagement rate comes down okay True. so I, I used to work with mid level of influencers not very high i would never go for millions the people who have been, I would go with, let's say, if I want, let uh, because my goal is to reach, uh, let's say my goal is to reach out to 1 million people, okay, then usually I'll, what I'll do is, I'll go to a person, uh, influ influencer who, who has a profile of 1 million, okay, that's what my genuine idea will go on, right, but what I would prefer doing is, uh, finding out 10 influencers who have 10k, 10k, 10k of followers, because their engagement rate is going to be very high than this one person of having a 1 million of followers. Okay. So this is one of the very useful metric that I use for influencer marketing. Okay. And yes, influencer marketing should be used. 
for every business. There are a lot of influencers who talks about your kind of service, your kind of product. Meet them, greet them, uh, offer them something so that uh, they can advocate your product or make the make. Uh, I would best way to do it is uh, you need to make them believers of your product. I mean believers in the sense like uh, you need to evangelize them with your product. If they evangelize, they will definitely talk about your product. True, and it was really a good advice which you mentioned that instead of reaching to the uh, influencers who have like crazy amount of followers, I have seen that where their engagement rate is very pathetic. Yes. Uh, that's uh, of course true. And uh, yeah, yes. like as you mentioned, reach out to the small influencers and try to promote uh, like instead of one guy, try in booking like 10 influencers and promoting the product. And of course, guys, in case if you have any business and if you want to promote any kind of influencer marketing, just doing a small kind of uh, uh, like my thing uh, where like I have drop my LinkedIn on the chat. So if you guys want any kind of influencer marketing services, you can reach out to me. I've got a sheet where I have like 500 plus contacts, including uh, celebrities to nano, like 10,000 to millions. So I have got a, a very various range of influencers so I can help you guys. Okay. Super. Thanks Thank so much for the session. Where can we access your recording? You know, this version of the session. Recordings, I think, uh, yes, it will be available on... Uh... Sam, I would have shared a link on MFIRD group. There, there's a tiny URL where you can see the recordings on YouTube. Yeah, the recording will be available after a few days, inshallah. So okay. uh, I'll put the link in the chat box where you can access this recording and all the previous recordings also right. that we have conducted till now. And also share it by contact details if you can do that also. No? You can Please, get in touch with them. Yeah. Can connect yeah. In as well. So I'll just take one or two questions by on the chat because people have been asking on the voice. So there are people who have silently put their question on uh, chat. Okay, so I'll just take one or two of them. Okay. So yes, Mr. Imran Pasha says, uh, if you can guide us how to get projects to begin our journey by taking a project something, uh, oh, you, what happened? Okay, uh, taking a project something like internship. If you can guide us how to get projects to begin our journey, taking a project, something like internship. I don't know, Imran Bhai, what you are into right currently, but there are two things that you have asked. Okay, how to start your journey? And I don't know, journey in the sense, if you already have an agency and you want to get project, or you just want to, uh, you are a marketing professional, completed your studies in marketing, and you want to take an internship on digital marketing. If you no, are no, in the job, I'm into job. I want to do some freelancing. I did a content writing course along with a little bit of digital marketing, but I have not started yet. Okay. And I don't know how to. So look, uh, yes, there's a lot to learn in digital marketing. So uh, yes, <clears throat> look, if you want to get some projects, okay. Uh, I don't know. You, you, I should. I don't think you should get some project uh, for as far as uh, now. Okay. So yes, it's always a good uh, option to go for internship. A lot of companies, they offer internship. There's an online internship. Uh, there are a lot of online internship which goes out. Okay, take some internship and I would refer. Have you taken a professional course, Imran, Imran Bhai, on digital marketing? No, I from BQ, I did content marketing course. It's a two-day course. In that, they taught a little bit of digital marketing. They told digital marketing is a separate hey. course. But we are teaching this in this content writing a little bit. Content writing is just a small part, part of digital marketing. So what I would suggest, if you're really interested and passionate about making a career in digital marketing, you should do some investment on it. Please take up a professional course of end-to-end -end digital marketing. Okay. There are a couple of uh, good academies where it gives you hands-on and all. Right. Uh, so there's Digital 360, Digital Vidya. Okay, there are a couple of good of them. Okay, it will cost you around 50 to 60K. But believe me, that's investment. If you are really uh, interested in uh, bring, uh, making a career in digital marketing, you should go for a professional course. Uh, hustling here and there will not help. You will just get confused for sure. Okay. So, yes, I will. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Yeah, I have one question regarding how to find audience in the LinkedIn. So find audience in the LinkedIn. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I have one product. So just I want to get the lead, something like that. So. What is your product, sir? 
uh, that is AMC. Uh, AMC software is there. Uh, that fire management inspection and all the ERP system, CRM, all those okay. I have here. I think, look, uh, so I'll tell you both the organic and the, what do you say, paid way as well. So talking about the paid way, uh, there's something called uh, LinkedIn Navigator. It's a paid tool. Okay. LinkedIn Navigator, you subscribe to it and uh, you enter all your details and it sends you lead. Easy way. Okay. <laughs> Pay them, get leads on LinkedIn. It's called LinkedIn Navigator. Okay. The best way to uh, search prospective on LinkedIn for your business. Okay. Okay. Great. Free, I would say, uh, start creating content uh, around your things on LinkedIn. Okay. Start uh, creating content uh, around your business and thing, uh, your services that you offer. Uh, showcase the solution that you have. Okay. Not talk about the problem and the solution that you have. And uh, then uh, engage with the right kind of people. You need to do some mm -hmm. research. Okay. Uh, some research in the sense, uh, like you need to find out key people. Okay, so usually what happens, EMC, look, uh, there, there are decision makers in the company, right? So your yeah. audience is the decision maker of the company, okay, who gonna approve this uh, software. Okay. Correct. So there are, I think, look, you need to grind it down to a bit uh, more granular level. Look, there will be two people for you, which, uh, which is very important. One is the recommender. Okay. Okay. Let's say I'm I'm in a company. Okay, I am a developer or whatever. Er, let's say you you are in ERP, right? Yes. So I, I'm the development person. Okay, I feel a need of ERP to manage everything at one place. Correct. Correct. So I'll I, I my job. Uh, uh, so I'll be the one who will be identifying your product. Correct. Okay. Yes. So that that is one prospect of yours. The other prospect, when I identify that this is a ERP which is good, right? I'm gonna recommend it to some uh, to my leadership to get this platform or software. Correct? Yeah. So the second person who's gonna approve is the another prospect of you. So both should be aware of your brand. So it shouldn't be the best case scenario is uh, at least as a developer who's gonna use it should be aware of that product so that I can recommend. Okay. And the second person who's gonna uh, approve this software, right, uh, should also have a brand awareness so that when I refer this uh, product to my manager or my senior most, right, they shouldn't, uh, they should have heard it somewhere so that it becomes easy for them to approve it. So focus on these two prospects, find them on LinkedIn, okay. Uh, kind of get connected on them to them share valuable content with them okay engage with groups that talks about erp and this kind of stuff right and uh, def definitely uh, making a environment and a uh, audience around you will help you but uh, focus on what who's your ideal customers are Okay, so how, what I am planning now, just I want to create the content and based on the content, I want to create small video. So mm -hmm. how it will work, then I want to, I, I am planning to publish our LinkedIn and Facebook and Google business like that. So hope it will work. Uh, it will work, right? Yes. Yeah, it will, at far, as far, look, from the content perspective, what I, I would think, right, people, I'll give you a very... A crisp understanding of it for everyone not uh thank that's why we have this sessions right qa can be heard by everyone right so yeah. whenever you make a content right try try this thing okay if you can this is the best thing to do with content okay when whenever you're creating content look internet is content hungry okay the whole of internet is content hungry okay they want more and more content right but you, uh, to get your content, people often ask me this, how to get your content viral, okay? How to make a viral content, which goes viral on LinkedIn, YouTube. And, uh, so I tell them this, uh, so internet is uh, hungry of content. It's a content hungry platform, right? Whole of internet, right? Oh. So the information which is already available in internet, if you are providing the same information on any platform, let's say Google, search engine, social media, LinkedIn, anywhere, right? Nobody will care about it. 
Okay. And the internet will not push it because that content all that content piece already exists in the ecosystem of internet. If there is a fresh content, if there is a new information which the world doesn't know about this particular topic, right? Internet is a uh, content hungry. It will it will push it like a viral thing so that it get added to the internet database. So that's one fact that everybody should look at creating unique content, which is not available on. So whenever you create a content, right? Just Google the same thing on uh, internet. If you find, of, of course, uh, whatever you have planned till now, I bet that people would have done it thousand times. Yeah. Right. So if you can create something unique, then internet yeah. will push it like anything. Sure, sure. And okay. just, uh, yeah, last final question. So how we can do the email uh, marketing, something like that? Use email, uh, MailChimp, sir. It's, it also gives you a free plan of two, uh, sending your emails to 2,000 subscribers for free. It gives you free templates uh, of email, different kind of welcome email, sales email, promotional email, a lot of templates it has. Okay. And it's a good tool to start with. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. No worries. Okay, I think uh, uh, I'm done. So, yes. So, do we have any final question or? Uh, Shri Bhai, any other question in the chat box you want to take? Uh, we can get out the project. Uh, there's one question which I had eye on it. According to what kind of projects are engineering college professor can deliver? Uh, I think there are a lot of, um, I'm sorry, I can, I can, people can reach out to me on WhatsApp as well, LinkedIn. Uh, I'll also put my number here because a lot of people are asking for it. Okay. But it's uh, always preferred to have text uh, before we get connected. Okay. Right? The best way to do it. Okay. So I think thank you, Seb. Bye. We we I'm, I want to wrap up here because it's already gonna close to be one hour, uh, more than one hour. I took a lot of time. Okay, and thanks for the opportunity to make me come on the platform of MFIRD, which is a very esteemed and very close to my heart as well. Okay, it's such a nice platform, uh, and I'm I'm really honored to uh, like to speak on the platform of. <laughs> Thank you. thank you for you to push me all this while since you have been working for two months. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really sorry. So, inshallah, we'll have further sessions uh, on digital marketing. Inshallah, there's so much to cover. Yeah. yeah. So much uh, interest from the audience also. So, thanks everyone for joining this session. And inshallah, we'll uh, keep meeting and keep having uh, further learnings. Inshallah. So, with this, we close this session. Assalamu alaikum. Yes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.